calling a meeting of the 12th September 2023 Planning Commission to order at 7.08 or 1908 hours. Okay. Um, do we have any additions, deletions for agenda items? No. Okay. May I have a motion? Motion to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, passed. All right, um, <coughs> review and approval of the minutes. We did not have a July or August meeting, so we have to approve the June minutes, and we never have approved the January minutes, and I have been requested to try and get those in if we could. So, shall we start with June? Any yeah. changes, deletions? None here. I, I see it. I uh, move that we approve them as written. I second that. Okay, so, okay, that's a June, so Tony, Kevin second. Right, all those in favor? Nice. Aye. Right. And the January? Those are intense. Yes. <coughs> I, uh, I have a, I'm not sure if um, it suggests the changes to number four on page two. Mm -hmm. um, criteria, criterion, I think something's wrong in, with those criteria. I thought criteria are plural and a criterion is a single, singular, but I'm not 100% sure. I'll check that, but Where I... Where are we on page two? Um, um, right in the middle, suggested change number four, it says. Suggesting added... I think a fifth Criterion. Criterion. Yeah, I know. Concerning, and then uh, Thayer suggested another criteria referred to the scenic. Okay, I will. Um, just, just, I'm um, nitpicking. No, I will. <laughs> I'll check the di uh, dictionary and make corrections as necessary. Okay, and uh, the other thing that I found on that page, the second to last line, it says, Types of permits and who issued in introductions and table. I'm not sure if if it this last last sentence. Uh, I, I don't know if it's issue uh, the person who issued them or or who issues them. I believe it should say change wording of types of permits and who issues. Yeah, that's, uh, that's sort Instead of what of I thought. Eating. Okay, that's all I saw that I wanted to think about objecting to. Okay, yeah. That's one of the changes that was made in uh, throughout difference between administrative and development review board changes. Okay. Right. Anything else? Not that I saw. All right. Then if I could have a motion to accept with changes. I'll move. I'll second that. Okay. And Tony seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Super. Okay, zoning administrator report. We are up to permit number 28 for the year. That's good. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit slower, so construction slowing down a little bit. Uh, we did the development review board held one hearing um, over the summer. They've met, but they held one hearing and they did issue a permit. Um, there is it, for the uh, uh, Mr. Page, um, there is a little bit of problem, possible problem with that uh, in the future because it is in the flood hazard zone. But he did meet the criteria um, and he is putting in flood baffles. They approved it. So uh, that's it. the rest of the permits are pretty much the same uh, decks, that type of thing. Okay. Did we have any FEMA activity down along the river down there? Yeah, we did. Uh, FEMA came through. Apparently, Wallingford has the distinction of being the most affected by the flood uh, by the flooding in the county of Rutland. No comparison to any of the others, obviously. And uh, they were here; they're still here. And the town administrator is working with FEMA to get uh, out areas road areas that were flooded affected by the floods um, she and the town foreman and actually the whole road crew are working on that uh, re 
FEMA's coming back wanting more and more reports. And as a side note, it's pretty obvious sometimes that FEMA is not accustomed to working with small towns. <laughs> um, you know, they want to know where the IT department is, where, <laughs> for example, other things, um, which of course we don't have. Yeah. So, um, but they're working with Rutland, Danby, and Dorset, I believe. I mean, sorry, with Wallingford, Dorset, and Danby, I believe. They were here almost, they were here during Wallingford Day because uh, they came over to the Rotary and wanting to know if uh, anybody could help them out. So yeah, and uh, obviously there's a lot still going on and things that still have to get done. So, but that's my report. Okay, proposed regulations. Um, Tony, you uh, sent over a four page comparison. Kind of. Okay. Um, well, like I said before, it was a little, I, I found it a little difficult trying to compare the three um, towns in that, you know, the regulations weren't written with the other towns in mind, so things are just a little sort of mixed in there. So some of, some of the first page here is pretty, pretty easy to compare. Um, I compared for section our section 505 are the, are the sort of uh, dimensions of the lots and, and, and things like that in uh, neighborhood commercial and you can kind of compare those I don't know that there's anything that we are doing you know kind of wrong or drastically different I guess um, than the other towns and I, I mean I, most of I didn't really see anything that, that sort of stood out through the things I compared. Um, so the uh, frontage on in the the industrial pro with with Proctor was uh, <clears throat> you know pretty large, it's 300 feet. I I guess that means they're trying to discourage um, an industrial uh, development there or something like that. That was sort yeah. of different, um, and we we didn't. Uh, well, our, for industrial, we don't have a specific, I guess, depth for a lot. I don't know if that matters. Um, we have a you know a size and setbacks and, and things like that, but okay. that's something that's that's different from the others, as far as I could see. Um, So the section 601, I guess that's what the zoning administrator has to uh, approve um, or can approve. Um, I mean, anything besides the one and two family and accessory structures and proctor has to go to a planning commission review. And I don't know if that's the same as our DRB, but. No, it's the same as us. They don't have a separate planning commission. I mean, uh, oh, development me. review board. Yeah. Okay. The, so that's that. Yeah. So that makes sense. So that's not terribly different. Um, there is in Proctor. If you in Proctor, basically all signs. I mean, no, West Rutland. All signs have to be permitted, except for, you know, I guess you can have a two a two square foot lighted sign saying open that doesn't need a permit, but everything else needs a permit. So they. Uh, are pretty strict with their signage. Um, and the other thing I thought was interesting, if you're going to excavate or fill more than 30 cubic yards, you also need a, a permit from the, the town, I guess. And I don't know that you know we have anything like that. I don't know that it really matters. Um, what would that be under? It's well. It's on the. It's six hundred one Z A. It's in the middle of the okay. page. Um, <clears throat> well, I meant the um, excavation thing. 
Well, that's in uh, West, where it is in West Rutland. I'm not exactly sure off, offhand. Okay, sorry. But they did, yeah, I mean, that's, I think it's where they talk about the duties of the zoning administrator, but um, I didn't write down exactly where that was. Um, for permits, you know, we require one copy, Proctor wants five copies, and West Rutland wants two copies. Um, everyone basically ours says 30 days but it's the same as as everyone i guess you have to issue 30 days after all the you know state permits and other permits that have been acquired so we are the sort of last ones or the zoning administrator gets the last crack at things when everything else is in order so that's the same thing um there's a little bit of difference in the you know time you get to start and complete your project once you've gotten a permit um, for us we say two years you get one year in um, Proctor but then you can um, apply for a six month extension they don't really specify how many you can get and there's no application as to, or no timing as to when you have to start applying for that in uh, West Rutland you can you have to start within 12 months and completed within two years and you can get a one-year extension if you apply 45 days prior to you know your first permit running out I don't know what happens if you're not finished I mean they don't really address that um, <laughs> and it's 44 days prior I, I don't know um. <clears throat> So nobody really, we, we at least have a, a dollar amount for our penalties um, where if someone starts, you know, jumps the gun, they have to pay, I guess, the zoning administrator in town $250 in addition to any other fines that, that apply. And no one else really seems to address that. And Proctor says that you have to you can't, um, you know, I guess levy anything until you've given them seven days after a certified mail warning. And I didn't see that we had anything like that. I don't know if it's, if that's necessary. And West Rutland just sort of referred to those Vermont statutes that I did not look up. I admit. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, Proctor calls there, I guess they have a board of adjustment for this, the developmental review board. And um, West Rutland says you get a decision within 45 days after the hearing completion. And I didn't write down ours because um, I'm not on the developmental review board and you it's, people know that better than I do. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the same because yeah. we're all under the VSA for yeah. So it's... Um, uh, they have to have yeah. a decision 45 days. The same thing as 606, the appeals to the environmental court. It's yeah. all the same. Um, referral to state agencies. This sort of means these are, it's actually more deferral to state agencies. Their, their regulations for wastewater, you know, roads, you know, you can't build right in the middle of some state highway or, you know, close to a state highway. The, all that is those deferrals um, <clears throat> um, and th the same sorts of things apply and there are sections in those two other uh, <clears throat> zoning uh, rules for the other towns if you care to read them I don't think it was that germane um, mobile home park permit so this is I guess if you want to um, have or create a mobile home park where people are going to, you know, you're going to put in mobile homes or people are going to bring them in and set them up, there are um, different fees and requirements. Um, West Rutland calls it a planned unit development, and those um, things apply. Um, there's... Um, in, and we require DRB approval and Proctor says that you need a performance bond although I didn't see it really specified in their zoning regulations but I guess you have to 
pony up some money so you don't waste everyone's time, you know, with um, deciding you want to try to do it and then not. I presume that's what the performance bond is, is there for, but I don't know. So if you want to have a mobile home park, there are certain requirements. Um, and of course, West Rutland wants it, it's a planned unit development, so you'd have to look to that. But we and Proctor are sort of comparable. We have, you know, a lot of ours has to be 15 acres, which is pretty generous. Theirs can only be five. Each one requires 8,000 square foot per home site. Ours says you need five for the, you know, mobile home and you need to have an additional 3,000 for common space for everyone to be able to use, I guess. And those are the setbacks. They're pretty much the same. And, you know, they refuse is about the same thing. We say that you need a paved driveway. They don't say it needs to be paved. And they don't say the water has to, you have to be have a connection, but they say I don't know if that just means if you want to apply for one that water connection has to be available, but we say that you're going to have to have it connected. Um, <clears throat> the otherwise, uh, you can't. We say you can't do any sales. You know, you can't do a sh show your motor homes for sale there. It's not a commercial activity um, for us. And same thing in uh, Proctor. Um, we say fires are generally prohibited, open fires. And uh, Proctor wants two shade trees per home, not terribly well specified. And, and, but they do, they do say that you should have underground wires, so no overhead wires, uh, you know, utilities. And they want, you know, basically poured slab foundations for, and we don't seem to require that. Single mobile homes, it was a, sort of a mixed bag. Um, they, well, anyhow, I think, it, I think it gets mixed up with people just wanting to be in their camper. But we say if you have a single mobile home, you really are just need to have, you need a permit just sort of like you were building a house, you know, stick built house. And they talk about in section, 317 and Proctor, I think they may start referring to it almost like a camper. Um, and West Rutland says you need a permit and you need water and sewage. And you can see there's section 1012 to look at that. Um, trailer campground permit, uh, commercial. I, I guess I'm getting, getting lost in, in the weeds with trailer and campground permits. Um, I'd have to check on that. I've, I've sort of haven't been able to look at this for the last couple of days. Um, campground requirements, we have them listed um, for a commercial campground and the other two towns just say the board will approve whatever the requirements are. Um, and uh, storage of camping and rec equipment, we have ours. Um, no, one, no one else says you need to cover your boats, but that seems to be uh, a good idea since you won't get mosquitoes growing in the bottom of them. Um, you, if, you're, if you're kind of s sort of store, storage of camping rec equipment, but you're living in it, you need wastewater disposal, what we say. Interestingly, if it's under 10 feet in Proctor, you don't have to comply with lot setbacks. So if you've got a little tiny camper, you can put it wherever you want, apparently. <laughs> um, and, you know, we say, the other towns say you can live in them for up to half a year um, if you have your, you know, camper parked on your property. So we're quite a bit more strict than that for what it's worth. And then the signs, sort of where I kind of kind of got um, there, there's just so much um, so much differences be, in general between the towns um, as far as you know what signs are permitted where um, 
interestingly, uh, one of them, oh, I guess Proctor says it has to be able to, any signs have to withstand 30 pounds per square feet of wind pressure, and I don't know how they measure that. But, you know, they, as far as if a business closes, we say you have a half a year to remove it, practically, and other people are a little, or at least uh, West Rutland says you only have three, three months to get rid of it, so. Um, the, yeah, and so all, all the signs in West Rutland are basically a permit is required before you put one up, and they, you know, they also say you're not supposed to put any on rocks and trees or attach them to any rocks and trees. Um, I would have thought that'd be sort of self-explanatory, I guess, but, and then if in West Rutland, if you want to move a sign at all, you need a new permit for it, you know, or anything like that. Um, so I don't know that, you know, any of this really means we should be changing much of what we're doing, but it's sort of the things that I could kind of easily compare and any big differences that I was able to kind of pick out. Um, I don't know if you're seven foot five in West Rutland, you're going to be banging your head on their signs, I guess, since, of course, with people getting taller, they may want to up that a little. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if we have a freestanding sign height limit in our town. I didn't, don't think I saw that. Mm -hmm. There you have 20 feet and 15 feet for Proctor and West Rutland, respectively. So basically, is there anything in here that you think we ought to... Ought to change? Change or review a little bit further? Oh, man. Um, not, not really, because I don't want to go through it all again. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think, I think we, you know, I, I don't see anything, you know, I don't know what you think about, you know, if you want more than one copy per, for a site plan when someone submits it, if that makes a difference, um, you know. Quite, quite frankly. Too much paper. It's, it's too much paper and generally speaking. The site plan is attached to the permit. The copier, yeah. there's a copy that goes to the post office, a copy that gets posted here, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the applicant gets a copy of it uh, mm -hmm. when they've paid for it and when it's been approved. So it's three copies anyway. Yeah. Um, no, I, it's hard enough keeping track of an original and two copies rather than two originals or three originals. Right. Yeah, that's um, fine. The one that I thought was interesting under the signage, mm -hmm. um, no roof signs. Yeah. We don't have that anywhere. And who knows? <laughs> okay. I mean, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to add, would it? I don't think so. And they are, they do look tacky in Maya. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> my estimation. Another one said... Um, uh, it may have, may have been a proctor as well that the signs can't project above the, like if you put one on the wall of a building, somehow it can't go any higher than the, t the highest point of the roof. And it still leaves a lot of leeway if you want to put a sign up pretty high and make it almost look like a roof sign, but at least it isn't, you know, set back on your roof or... Somebody did a heck of a job here. Thank you. Well, thanks. Well, we don't specify a roof, but I think we could. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, three letters, three words, no roof signs. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out. I don't think anyone in town has a um, roof sign now, do they? Yeah. 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 Yeah, that won't bother, won't gore anyone's ox at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah, Family Dollar is the closest to a roof sign, and that's not really a roof sign. Um, it would have to go under Section 902. You have copies of the uh, proposed. Um, and the new proposed. We're um, starting with line 27 where it says flush mounted signs, and then you have projecting soffit windows. Um, Okay, that's allowable. 
special categories, exempt signs, prohibited signs, 906. Um, that's 36 of 54. So we could, um, we could add it. Um, actually, if you go over to 37, page 37, yeah, um, as I said, the numbers are off. Uh, we could do number 10. Sure. And then no roof Some signs permitted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I will add that in. I mean, we could tighten up when a business closes and give it three months instead of 180 days. I'm not, I don't know if that's worthwhile. Um, I don't know. Seems like a long time for someone to take down a sign, but I guess sometimes people close businesses under duress. They get sick or something and maybe, I don't know. We really haven't had any problems with that. Okay, let's so. let's let sleeping dogs. Yep. Okay. Like my two are right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um thank you. All right. And Lucy hasn't gotten back to us. So um I'll go on with the appendix. Um which is starting on page thirty eight or yeah, page 38 in the numbering. Um, I'm not going to go through each one of these because we did the other day. But um, basically, if you go through, you can tell. And obviously, this will be put up on the website. Anything that's in yellow and struck through cool. is what we're deleting. And then based on our meeting in May and partially in June, um, the minutes, by the way, I should specify, I did not include the additional 23 pages that was to the June minutes. No changes were made to that, and I will add those when I, uh, they go up on the website. I just thought that you didn't need to have another 23 pages no. of what you already have. So, um, save some paper. So everything, for example, even on page 39 under accessory dwelling slash apartment, if it's in red, if you go over to uh, over to it you, to the suggested changes, um, it's just literally pasted right on. Mm -hmm. So um, there wasn't any wording changes or anything. Uh, Artisan Craft Studio, I took it out of where it was because it's not in alphabetical order, and hmm. I put it in alphabetical order on the next page, I believe. And down the bottom of that. Or down on the bottom, yeah. yeah. So it's in there. Uh, in alphabetical order. Um, okay. And you can go through at your leisure if you want. We took out auto service station uh, in the minutes as it was, and then we added the auto service station with retail store hyphen mini mart because of the Sitco and also because of the um, one on Route 7, if you recall. Again, straight out word for word. Uh, no changes. So basically, uh, you can go through at your leisure and yeah, it's gonna take some reading. <laughs> yeah, but it's, I mean, I compared everything. I know, um, it's, it's, it's such a clean way to do this. This is what it was, this is what it is. Yeah, so, and then anything that didn't get changed stays pretty much the same. So, um, and there was a few changes, not a lot. Um, on page 49, recreation, private. Um, that definition got a little bit longer. Personnel mm -hmm. services, which we all agreed, um, kind of defines it, but not limited to, because people are coming in and saying, well, what's what's a personal service, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it's in there. 
I have a silly question. Sure. This is a silly question. Mm -hmm. um, the, the miniature golf course down there, that's in Danby's property? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. It doesn't belong to us. You're talking Otter Creek? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you know what they're... Bluegrass Festival and all this summer, it's starting to get interesting. Yeah, no. No, they're not, but I'll check on that um, just to be on the safe side because you, um, but they are beyond the, the limit, I believe. Um, that's easy enough to check, and I will. See, what I did was I went up to the top of uh, Tough Road, mm -hmm. which is where we have like the last house in Wally for you. Know? I took a sight line down and it was like, eh, hey, ask. <laughs> yeah. Um, if it is, then they have never come to us. Yeah. But truthfully speaking, I've had some questions over the last couple of weeks. Somebody with an address, and literally, it was in, in uh, East Wallingford on 155. This neighbor belongs in Wallingford. This neighbor belongs to Mount Holly. Yeah. It literally was the property line. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's quite possible, even if you take a sight reading, that, yeah. you know, it kind of curves <laughs> over. Um, even the Grange, I had an inquiry almost two years ago uh, from the owner of the property next to where the Grange is in South Wallingford because the deed said something along the lines of the southwest corner of the Grange building to... Yeah. You know? They had right. Yeah, well, yeah, the deed was <laughs> not a recent one. <laughs> so, anyway, that's yeah. um, pretty much it. The major, the major thing, I think, in the definitions, if I may, because um, I made a mental note of it, was in the family dwellings. Um, on page 43 of 54, we have dwelling unit, which we've always had. Then we decided to go to dwelling single family. Um, we had all of the verbiage in there, mm -hmm. and we agreed at the last minute just to put down a single family that's freestanding and everything. And dwelling multifamily... Instead of going into multifamily and duplexes and everything, if I, if you all recall, it was contained separate residential units within a single structure. Apartment buildings, condo complexes, and duplexes are all considered multifamily homes. Yep. Straight, straight out. I uh, personally, I think it's a lot easier. It is. So technically speaking, and we didn't discuss this, this is why I'm bringing it up, because if you notice, the next says dwelling two family homes. Uh, building used as living quarters by two families living independently of each other. Um, do we really need that in there? I'm, I'm asking, because I'm not think really so, sure. Because <clears throat> then they'll ask, well, what's independently if um, you're if your son and his wife move in next door in your duplex, you know... It's still a duplex. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, is that independent? And what if you're... You could probably start, stop the sent at the sentence, families. Put a dot there. Which where? Building used as living quarters by two families, period. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's okay. kind of... Kind of <laughs> kind of repeating the <laughs> well it, it's what it is and no, it, do we need it if we have dwelling multifamily no yes. well then no we don't okay so we i can, can strike i can strike uh where it says dwelling two family building is just living quarters by two families yeah. living independently of each other that's a duplex as far as yeah you yeah know. So that's under dwelling multifamily yeah okay i'm gonna cross it off all right, I shall delete it. All right, so that's as far as, I mean, that's it. All the other changes that we made throughout the year um, in the rest of the, um, in the body of the proposed are still in red. I haven't taken them out. Okay. So. Um, yeah, this is, this is some good reading, slow reading. 
So I will make those two changes to the, well, two or three changes and um, get back to you. Um, okay. Or if you wish, if you wish I, um, if it's the pleasure of the board, I think it's about time to send it to the planning, to the select board. I concur. And uh, ask them if we can send it to the VCLT for review. I think we're just about at that point where um, the VCLT needs to review it and uh, tell us if there's any major problems or not. Yeah, I, I, if they kick it back, that's okay. I don't want to find out three months from now. Yeah. Right. It was something we could have fixed in a day. Okay. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm fine. Are you making a motion? I will make a motion <laughs> that we send this up to the VCLT board. And the select board and or and the VCLT? Select board and wherever else it's got to go. <laughs> well, it should go to the select board. With um, the, and with then the, we get the select board's approval to send it down to the VCLT. Yeah, and because uh, really, there may be a hole here or there, and it's easy to fix rather than getting you know shot in the foot at the last minute. Well, it's nice to have someone else's approval yeah. on it when you yeah. say, "Well, if you CLT see looked at it." We got nothing to hide, <laughs> man. You just send it out there. Okay. Well, I have a motion. I have a second. Um, What's the wording that we send this to the select, select board, board for I their have, approval to send it to the VCLT? Yeah, or for I have Kevin. Kevin made a motion to send to the select board and to the VCLT. And of course, it's being recorded on PEG, so I'll make sure that the verbiage is exactly what it is. Okay. Um, second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. All right. Then uh, what I will do is, if it's okay with if if with board approval, I will go ahead and make the changes change the page number I mean yeah change the page numbers if necessary to reflect with those changes mm -hmm. uh, in here so everything matches up and um, request to get on the select board agenda if possible the next time they meet which I believe is Monday yeah so you'll have to be fast but I think we can do it okay Okay. Um, right. If not, then it will be their first meeting in October. Okay? Yeah. Alrighty. Comments from the public? We have no public. So, our next meeting is the 10th of October. That's our normal schedule. Um, unless there's any problems. And I know. May I have a motion to adjourn? I will so move. I'll second it. Okay. We are adjourned at... 1946 hours or 740 uh, 746